how uh, how has lockdown been for you, Savannah? Like, how do you find it as a as a boxer who like you obviously had the fight dates like lined up in that for the big Newcastle show and that, uh, and then suddenly that's gone and like I guess like your income stops and that. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah, goals, yeah. How does that like how does that affect you? Well, for me, just to be two weeks away from a world title shot and for a global uh, pandemic to hit, I just think, God, you just can't write it. That's unlucky, that, isn't it? Well, that's... exactly, yeah, exactly. But I'd, I'd, paid, I'd paid for all my camp, um, all my sparring, and not just... With boxing, you expect to get that back, so it's like... You know, you've got to, you pay all your expenses and then you get you expect to get it back with your fight pairs. But when that mm. fight doesn't happen, it's like, well, do you know, I've just I've I've spent all this money and I'm never ever gonna I'm never gonna get it back. So, so what did you do? Was it basically like, oh, I'm gonna have to get myself back to Hartlepool and just sort of sit tight for a bit and just you know what I mean? Like just get well, out of Manchester and get back to see your family and stuff. Yeah, well um to be honest, I I've got a couple of good sponsors, but in the back of my mind, I even said to my sponsors, I was like, look, I'd rather you pay your employees than pay me. Mm -hmm. I was like, so look, just keep me in the loop. And if, you know, if, if, you, if you need to stop, you know, my monthly sponsorships, just let me know. So I, I, I was applying for jobs. Well, you actually, I came, I came to that. Wow. Yeah, I'd applied for a couple of jobs. I applied for Aldi, <laughs> Lidl, Tesco. Any, any luck? Yeah, you get there. Can you let us back? I never even, I never got one interview. Hey, never. I never even got through the application process for Aldi. <laughs> Stick the box in there. <laughs> yeah. That's hey, God, that's that's mad. That that's that's the side I guess that you don't see. Do you know what I mean? Of like, you know, people might have a perception that boxers are like loaded and on good money and you know especially like boxing at a high level and stuff but it's it's not always the case isn't it no? it's not and it's it's a bit like you know sometimes when I fight and me and my family or friends will go oh how much are you getting for this for this fight and they say well I'm getting this much but then mm. they don't see that you've got to pay your manager you've got to pay your trainer then you're getting tax on that and then you've already spent you know maybe up to a couple of hundred couple of grand for the camp mm, so really nice. it's 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 like it's minimum wage really although i think just because you're getting it in a lump sum people think oh wow I, you know you, you must be loaded but when once you work out over the tax share it's it's not that special and i think <laughs> that people will probably look at it and think well like for yourself, you box sort of four times. It was it in twenty eighteen, three times last year, and they think, oh well, times that by however many fights you can have. But it's not just the fight you're getting paid for. Like you've said there, it's the whole camp. There could be a three month build up that you're having to live on that purse that like yeah, isn't, yeah. It hasn't even come in yet. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do in Manchester? Do you like do you rent a room down there? Like are you house sharing or like how does it like obviously there's that there's accommodation side as well, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? There's, so, as well as like. Well, um, when I when I first when I first started training with Peter, I was actually living. He's got a couple of like caravan parks, so I was actually staying on one of his caravan parks. Um, that was a couple of years ago, but yeah. now I've 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 it it was more beneficial for me. I was going home every weekend, and to be honest, it was just draining me. You know that M sixty two on a Friday, and then coming back yeah. on the Sunday. So I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm I'm just gonna rent somewhere. So I've got myself a, just just a little house, not eight miles from the gym. Fucking good. Yeah, Is yeah. that easier in terms of reducing any distractions and things going on outside the ring? Obviously, we've talked about the importance of like friends and family, but when you're in camp, is it almost easier just to shut yourself away from all that? Um, I've never really struggled with. with I'm not the most social. I'm not. A, I'm not a massive social butterfly. So that's never uh, that's never <laughs> bothered me. But um, I think when I'm in Hartlepool, all my friends are, oh, let's go out for some food. Oh, let, uh, let's go out for tea. Whereas here, yeah, it's more like, you know, I'd rather, because I, I haven't got, you know, them friends saying, come on, let's, let's go and get a fag, guys. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 does, that does help, I reckon, yeah. So just, obviously about that disappointment that you mentioned before of the new you know the newcastle date initially getting pulled and that like two weeks out you must have been literally 
on it, like raring to go, weight's good, everything's, you know what I mean? You've, you've, you've trained right, you've ate right, and all that. Then to get that pulled last minute, you must have been, you know, pretty, pretty devastated then. Well, originally the fight had been moved to to I, June. Yeah, it was okay. April originally, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah, then it was, June. It was it? April, Aye. April the fourth. Then it got moved to April, uh, June the twenty fifth. So to be honest, the start of lockdown, I was just ticking over because, like you said, there, me, me fitness was high. Mm. I was sharp, so I was just ticking over, and I was training really well, to be honest. And then halfway through lockdown, do you know, it, I just hit that wall and. I just thought, you know, what am I doing this for? What What is the point? Because then the during the 25th show got pushed right back to October. Yeah. And then, like I said, I just hit that wall. Just never had my head out the fridge. Um, <laughs> put the yeah. weight on. I, think, I, I don't think I, I just laid in bed for about three days, you know, feeling sorry for myself. At what point did you, like, take yourself back to Manchester to see Peter again and obviously, and, like, think, right, you know, I'm allowed back down here now. I'm going to work towards October. And, like, you know, at what point was that? Like, and did that do you the world of good again? Like, sort of giving, giving yourself something to focus on as well? Um, I've, I've, I've been back now, I would say, for about, maybe about a month and a half. Right. I mean, like that. So I've been back mm. in the gym with a, a good couple of weeks, just 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 getting back into work, getting me, you know, my foot back in the door, um, fitness back up. So, yeah, it is good because that routine's back, whereas it's probably the same with, you know, anyone really in lockdown, yeah. everyone's routine it just, you know, just was non-existent anymore. And I think that was the hardest thing to get over. At this point, right, so what are we now, like middle of August, are you, like, are you expecting October to happen? Have you been told by Matchroom, like, it's happening, you know, this is your date, you know, you're fighting on this date like are you trading with that in mind now that like, i'm fighting for the world title in newcastle in october um yeah to be honest i've been told that 100 percent happened whether it was with crowds yeah. or with not but the reason yeah. why do you know it hasn't happened already without crowds is because i think it was already a sellout anyway and Aye. you know that newcastle the atmosphere is unbelievable so i think they were holding out to you know still do the show you know, with the full 10,000 people there. Um, but for me now, do you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dedicated. I always try and be positive and, I'm, you know, got my head down trained towards that date. But I do believe there will be a second wave. And even if, you know, it does go on behind closed doors, there's always that doubt that even now, nine weeks beforehand, I know they're struggling yeah. with getting opponents from overseas because I know the... Yeah, like, true. Americans can't come to Europe. Um, I know that the, you know, um, New Zealand have gone back into lockdown. So it's it's, you know, there's there's loads of questions around it. But yeah, no it is, one, isn't it? I guess yeah. it's hard. It's hard to predict, isn't it? You know, you can't. It is. It like, is. You just have to. Uh, it's 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 mad. Like, so. We were talking earlier as well. Obviously, like women's boxing seems to be sort of bursting onto the scene now, especially the last couple of weeks. But there's still not that necessarily that depth there at the at the top level, the world class like opponents that you've sort of mentioned there. How much does that weigh in your mind, like who the opponent will be, or is it solely your folks on it's going to be for a world title? That's that's what's driving you. Um, I don't know what it's like at other weights, but at, at my weight, you know, middle, super middle, that pool of women, there seems to be, you know, three or four that are like well class and then there's a big drop so i'm just i want one of them three or four i want the girls that are up there uh no disrespect to anyone else but i don't want to do a 12-week camp to box someone who's i'm gonna blow away in the first round because you know it's 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 a bit deflating uh, you've you've you passed that stage now aren't you i think the thing is yeah, like yeah. you've done that do you know what i mean you've had those sort of those learning fights and not that like you needed any because you're a good amateur anyway do you know what I mean but you you, you want to be in the mix now don't you for those those yeah. big nights and big fights and that I want I want those challenges I want I want those fights where my back's against the ropes and I've got to you know think on my feet and um, like I said it's 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 what I train 12 like it's what I train for so I want to be up there with the best of them 
It is mad though how long that Newcastle date's been like. Not drag. I don't want to say dragged out because it's nobody's fault. Do you know what I mean? But remember that press conference at the stage and that. So that was yeah. how long? Go, how long ago is that now? It well, feels like. It feels like it was for like a different fight. Do you know what I mean? Like it feels like exactly. I feel like it was in February. Yeah, that's mad. No, that's nice. Probably it's... was. I know. I, I still no. I'm I'm quite close with April, and obviously Joe yeah. Laws and there's no Joe. <laughs> you can just oh, yeah. imagine Joe's yeah. been training solid for six months for this for this fight to come off. Yeah, so they're not. Everyone's just like chomping at the bit, wanting it to happen and waiting for it to happen. What is your like gut instinct with regards to crowds and that? Do you get any guidance from Matchroom in that, or like, do you, do you are they going to look at maybe partial crowds, or you know, like at least you get some people in the arena, or do you think it would literally be like, what you know, behind closed doors, literally no crowd? Um, I know it's not not putting you on the spot or anything. Well, I just mean like, obviously, I know you'd probably prefer having fans there. Yeah, that, yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I think this is why it's being put back like twice mm. and obviously it's not being part of fight camp you can say because yeah. the way the way holding out for that newcastle crowd because it, like i said the atmosphere was drawn amazing and it was a sellout so right. and you must have shifted some tickets as well obviously being a hartlepool last as well do you know what i mean yeah, like I did, it's yeah, a great yeah. chance good chance for your friends and family to see you up here as well yeah i done. i done nearly 500 tickets and then I, I refund the full lot. It took me weeks, <laughs> weeks and weeks to refund the full lot. Oh, it was a nightmare. But um, like I said, I, I, I seen a, Eddie had done an interview not a couple of days ago, it might have been with yours actually. And he'd said, oh, we're, we're holding out for audience. It was <laughs> Oh, was it not? Well, it was. No, no, it was, but... no it, was the other, it was the other boxing, British, yeah. uh, boxing UK or something. Aye, uh, well, sorry, go on. But he'd said in this interview that, you know, even if you can get a thousand people there. It's better than now, isn't it? It is, it is. Because it, um, I'd look, don't get me wrong, I'd love to be a part of this fight camp, but it just looks awkward. Was there ever any mention of that, Savannah? Or have they always sort of kept you, you know, in the in mind for the Newcastle show? Or did he get offered a chance to go on this? Or No, do you know what? I'd have been, I'd have been, I'd have jumped at the chance to go on that fight camp. Oh, God, too, right? No. All right, um, but other than that it never it never come my way. Um, couldn't tell you why. Uh, but let's just hope October comes off eh? That's it. I know. Right. How have you uh, How have you found the last the last couple of weeks? Obviously, we had Shannon Courtney, Rachel Ball last night, and uh, Terry Harper, Tasha Jonas as well the week before. And like you say, that that exposure now, especially that match room and Sky, and that are given. Um, have you have you enjoyed those two those two fights? Uh, well, obviously I've I've known Ta I've known Tash since I was about sixteen, yeah, so I I've that. I've trained with Tash in a long time, and I know what Tash can do, and everyone had ripped Ta Tash off. They had, and like, I was like, be... yeah, they had, and you can't re you can't really be biased, especially on social media. But I knew that the best of Tasha Jonas. Would have give Terry Harper, uh, you know, big big problems, and obviously the position that Terry's in and being two time world champion, and you know, being really the apart from Katie, the, the face of of matchroom boxing, I knew that mm. Tash would really have to pull it out the bag, and although she did pull it out the bag and scraped a draw. Do you know, I did feel like Tash had done it enough to get. I, I the thought win. she had as well. Like I thought she'd won that, and I think a lot of other people did as well, didn't they? I don't know why. Um, yeah, yeah. Would you like? Would you think they'll go again, them two? Well, that's another thing because it's. Do you know they don't have to go again? There's no. Yeah, that's true. Like they don't. I. They don't have to, and if if I was Terry, I'd think, well, do you know? Do I really want that again? <laughs> do I really want that again? I got the draw. Kept me. I kept me titles. I'd rather just move on. She doesn't have to give her a rematch. So you know, I think I, the I, question I, marks over the fight, though. Like we both, well, you two both sat there, and I would say the same. Like I think Natasha's got that and did enough to win. That maybe, like obviously, we're seeing Katie Taylor rematch and pursue next week. She's thinking, right? I I want to show that I like I am better. That I can do better than that. That I can beat her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. But, but then I think also from Tasha's perspective, 
I know I know Tash probably won't mind me saying this, but Tash is thirty six, and yeah, this yeah. was Tash's this was Tash's chance. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. you know, it was probably the best performance she's ever done as a pro, and she probably can come again, and um, just just as good. But you know, there's just all that questions was, around yeah. it. Yeah. And I think you tweeted us yesterday saying you fancied Ball for that fight last night. You got that yeah, one. So far, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you well, I'll that. tell you what, right? I, t- I know that Shannon's very, very popular and she has brought a lot of, um, you know, publicity to women's boxing. So fair play it were there. But I have seen Rachel box before and I thought, oh, Shannon's up against it. So I actually put a bet on for, for uh, Rachel to win. And then my ass just fell out three rounds and I cashed out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cashed you out alone in, in putting the bet on, though. Like a lot I of people, it. that's been gaining a lot of traction on social media in the last few weeks, sort of because like yeah. the odds that, that Rachel was to cause the upset, and everyone was sort of thinking, well, actually, hang on, like this is going to be the best that Shannon Courtney's faced by a long chalk. I, yeah, yeah. I stuck a couple of quid on the draw, me, you know, just after last week. Oh, and I thought, did you? I have because I thought there's only eight rounds and I thought if there's not much in these with Shannon being like the macho and fighter and that. Do you know what I mean? I just thought yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was worth covering at nine, ten to one, like and so I just but I I thought I don't know if I was getting influenced by the commentary or not, like Matthew Macklin and that, but I thought Shannon was sort of doing all right in them like them I say middle rounds, you know, like three, four I thought he recovered all right from the knockdown and that, but yeah. Um mm-hmm. but again I don't I think when you watch with that sky com- uh, commentary on sometimes you can get a bit like carried away with what they're saying, do you know what I mean? Where I was messaging Andrew here through it and that and he was going, No, ball's ball's gonna win this. And I was like, Are you sure? I thought Courtney yeah. was probably doing enough, but then I thought actually when you read what people were saying on Twitter and that then, you know, a lot of people did have it that way for ball like so I, there was no arguments wasn't enough. She couldn't really argue well, with that. Well to be honest, I, I had Rachel winning by one point. Yeah. So like you said, you can argue with it, but it was the best Shannon I've seen, and Aye. from from that performance, uh, uh, you know, Shannon could only go on to, you know, bigger and better things from that on because she, I thought the better shots and the better boxer on the night was Shannon, but that I think that knockdown, you know, swayed it for yeah, I for, fully for agree with that. And yeah. I think like Shannon was boxing really well in that first round as well. She was slipping and, and doing the right things. It was then she actually caught Rachel with a nice right hand. And from there, she got a bit greedy and lost her composure a bit and then obviously got dropped. Otherwise, that yeah. potentially would have been a Shannon Courtney round as well, which could have swung the fight in her favour. Yeah, 100%. 100%. It was, um, it was a brilliant... What do you think about a, a matchroom or female card coming at some point in the future? Question. Good question, then. Yes. Well, I just hope I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't on the fight camp, so let's just fingers crossed I got on the all female fight card. All goes well. Eh? You could be, you could be yourself a world champion. We talk about Terry Harper there. There's obviously yeah, a lot of talk yeah. about the Courtney and Ball rematch as well. Like there's there's potentially enough interest there and enough sort of like as you said publicity around it now where you, you could. I don't want to use the phrase "get away with that," but you, it could be something that would maybe more, be more well received than it would have been maybe last year or the year before. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. But, um, sorry. Just looking at like last week's, uh, Terry and uh, Tash saved the show for me. Uh, it was a, it was pretty poor last week's card compared to the week before and then last night as well. But that that fight was was cracking like. You know, you see it on social media and everyone's buzzing about it, you know what I mean? Which is, like, mm-hmm. it's never always been the case with female boxing. But, like, just going back to you, Savannah, for a second, um, I read an interview the other week with you, and you were reflecting on, like, your amateur career and the Olympics and stuff like that, saying that maybe if you didn't have those setbacks, like, you know, and you were maybe a bit disappointed with how the Olympics and that went, that you maybe wouldn't have turned pro, do you know what I mean? And you wouldn't yeah. have that, like, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have that hunger to be, like, a professional like world champion and stuff like that. Um, is that something that like motivates you? And, and how do you look back on on those days? Uh, I believe I've 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 grown a lot as a person. Um, so yeah, I, I believe that I suffer a little bit with like social anxiety. Like I right. can't. I'm that person who you know can't stand parties or can't stand being in a room full of people. And you know when you think about it, you know you you box in front of thousands of people. Um, 
but at that age behind closed doors in October yeah 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 but at that age you know being that the favorite to win gold it it just it, it was I didn't know anything of like I didn't know I really understand anything like at, at the mm. time but looking back now I just I, I remember just not wanting to be there and just thinking I want to go home I want to go home and I was in the Olympic Games is that just pressure? Just, is that is that because all eyes are on you? And did you feel like pressure from like Team GB or friends or family, or what? Or was that just yourself putting yourself under pressure? Or, uh, like, I, I can't. Know? I don't really think it was pressure. I think it was just like I don't want to be here. Or uh, I guess looking at me. Everyone's talking about me. It. I. I, don't, I it was just one. Of, yeah, maybe I couldn't. I, maybe I couldn't deal with it. Is that something you've? And... Is that something you've like you've worked on, or you've if you as the older you've got, you've just got used to it, or like, or do you still get them like nerves and stuff? Or uh, no, I don't. I, not with boxing. I do with other like other like it, uh, the, my birthday was in lockdown, and my mum had organised a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a tea party, and I just <laughs> there was only a couple of us there, and I just didn't want to be there. I was just thinking, oh god, you know, I'm I'm like, just go in the front room and watch it's, Netflix. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, I'm like that. I don't anything like so being, anything all about me and like it's all yeah. I don't yeah. like you know, like I'll happily go to other people's do's and that, but if it's yeah, I've yeah. never I've never wanted like, oh let's have a big thirtieth or a big do you know what I mean? Like it's never been my type of you know, I'll happily go yeah, to other people's yeah. but um <laughs> Do you think it was just the magnitude of like the Olympics and that? Like just being like this is the Olympic Games and it's it's you know, it's a big deal and like God just get us get us home. <laughs> Well, well, when you were just talking about there about parties, I remember when I was coming through as an amateur, um, you know, 13, 14, mm. 15. Um, do you know me? I, I go at the gym on a night and my coach, Tim, would say, oh, I've got you a fight on, I don't know, the 20th of September. And I'd go home and I'd not tell anyone. I wouldn't tell me mum or dad. And then a couple of days before, I'd be like, go in the front room, oh, I'm fighting next week in September. On the twentieth, and like then run out the room. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. I never, uh, and people say, "Can I come?" And I'd be like, "Oh no, there's no room on the bus," because I just wouldn't. Like you said, there, I, I didn't like people being the center of attention or people talking about it. I just wanted to go there, do what I enjoyed, come home, and go to the gym the next day. That was just that was the way I am and the way it was. And yeah, going from even when I got onto the GB squad. Even when I won the world title, it was in a complete mm. other country. Uh, it was in China. That must have been. There was hardly no English there. No one knew who I was. So and, you could just like you know yeah. keep your head keep your head down and sort of yeah. Do you think yeah. right? Here's a question for you. Do you think that's why you took yourself off to America at the start of your pro career when you signed with Mayweather Promotions, or am I looking too far into that? Or was that just a good offer that you that's couldn't turn down? That seems like the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep your head down uh, no. with Mayweather. Uh, what, well, yeah. what was that experience? How do you look back on that then? What was that? That, well, like, that must have been a bit of a whirlwind as well. After Rio, I um, obviously I'd got to the I'd got the quarterfinals again, just missed out on a medal. And do you know what? I'd had enough of it. I'd had enough of boxing. Um, so I was ready to walk away from the sport. And then uh, contact of me with the promotions had gotten contact contact with me and asked if I was interested in turning pro. So for me, obviously, I just thought, right, the money team. Oh, my God, I'm made for life. It's a sign. Uh, maybe I shouldn't give up on boxing. So ended up signing with Mayweather, moving over to America. And, yeah, I, I believe I was naive in the whole sport of the professional boxing because I realised quite quickly that it's not like the Team GB set up or an amateur, you know, um, the amateur club. Professional boxing is a business. What so it did made that, go on, Andrew. Realised that and then brought it, brought it to your attention. Was well, it different to what you thought it was going to be? Did it not live up to your expectations? Is that fair to say? Uh, don't get me wrong, I love being there. and I love living in America. But the whole... So in my head, I was thinking, all oh, right, um, you know, maybe I'll fight once a month. Oh, I like, I like that European belt. I think I'll fight for that. Or... Do you know, I don't like that woman WBO one because it's pink, so we leave that one. But really, it, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It's you know you you know your promoter and your manager want to make money from you, mm. and you know they're not just going to put you on a show because you've asked them to 
or they're not just going to, you know, set you up to fight for the European title because you've asked, asked to be profitable for them. That must have been mad though. Like, I know obviously you're used to travelling, being an amateur and that, but then to just be like, right, was it just like literally you that went out to America and you're like, right, I'm living here now? And like, that must have been a bit, for a young lass from Hartlepool, that must have been a bit of a change. Do you know what I mean? Like, just a yeah. mad experience. Well, it, it, it was, and I believe that's when, do you know, I really, it sounds a bit, you know, a bit deep, but I, I believe that's when I come into my own and found myself mm. because I moved out there by myself and beforehand, do you know, I, I, I'm not, I, I'd quite happily just associate my circle of friends. Um, yeah. But being there, the only time I'd ever see anyone was when I'd go to the gym. So when I'd go to the gym on a morning, I'd be like, morning, everyone. How are you doing? Because I, because I hadn't had that social interaction for 24 hours. Do you know what I mean? How long were you so, over? How, how long were you signed with Mayweather Promotions? And how long were you like living over there and stuff? So it was, a, I think I'd signed a three year deal and I was out there six, seven months. And while I was out there, obviously I'd had my debut on the Conor McGregor and Mayweather undercard. And then, what was that like as an occasion? Like that's, that's a mad. I've got card. so many like, questions about all of this. That's it, mad it, to, to make your debut on that card, isn't it? Exactly. And I think making my debut on that that stage, that for, to me, that is at the top. You're boxing mm, in oh, that stage. Yeah. There was 14,000 people at the win. So then it's that's, just that's like, a... for, you can look at it like, well, there's nothing. Even when you stood in your bra and knickers, you know, in front of people getting weird. And I always think, well, there's nothing to be nervous about here because I did it in front of 14,000 people. Well, that's it, you've done that. So Not many like, people uh, experience, in it? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yes, yeah, so I was there six, seven months, and while I was there, I'd, I'd trained fully for two or three more fights, and all of them fell through right at the last minute. And it, I was getting annoyed, and I was getting a bit like, well, look, this isn't all what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> Did you ever feel a bit like out of sight, out of mind sort of thing? Like all this boxing stuff's going on in the UK and you're a bit like, all right, I am with like Mayweather, but I'm sort of missing, I'm missing out what's happening back in the UK and stuff. Did you ever feel like you're a bit under the radar on that? Uh, not really, because that wasn't me whole, like I said, I wasn't all, I don't, I wasn't yeah. really living for the spotlight type thing, but yeah, true. I. you could say, yeah. I felt like the you know the whole world was passing me by, and I'm just you know here training, waiting for this fight, and obviously it would the, the never come off. So I ended up uh, just coming home and just saying, look, it it's not working out for me. It's not financially beneficial for me. Um, so look, I'm I'm gonna go home. And anyway, I ended up you know coming to agreement and parting ways when they were the promotions, which it is when i when i think look i was part of the money team and it is sad that it come to the way it did but looking back now since mayweather retired how many shows has mayweather put on no nah, no uh, you never hear mayweather mm -hmm. promotions anymore yeah, i was going to ask about that like, how did it all work like how much did you sort of deal directly with with floyd mayweather junior or was it always through like advisors and intermediaries uh, yeah, so everything always went through my manager at the time, um, which is probably the same now with with Eddie. No one really gets close to Eddie, or as a, everything goes through your manager. But uh, I, everything was really with Leonard Ellaby, um, Mayweather's like right hand man. Yeah. But like I said, I, looking back now, I do believe that was the best move for me because, like I just said there, he doesn't. They don't really have shows. You know, you've got the likes of Badu Jack. Javon Air fights once in a blue moon. So I do believe that was it was the best move for me to come back to the UK when I did. Did you get many dealings with him personally, as in Floyd Mayweather? Was he ever like checking in on you? How is it going? Or is he is he very like distant, like you said? Like uh, you never... you said no. Yeah, he is he is very distant. <laughs> but I do remember, I do remember. Um the the build up to obviously the Conor McGregor Mayweather fight. I was staying in the MGM Grand waiting. I think it was a couple, might have been a week before the fight. And anyway, I um, I was asleep in bed and I had my phone went and I looked and it was my manager at the time. I remember thinking, oh, I'm not answering that. It's three o'clock in the morning. And anyway, he, he sent me a text saying, uh, oh, Savannah, um, we're all going to the gym to watch me where the train do you want to come? And I just thought, oh, stuff that. It's three o'clock. <laughs> three o'clock in the morning. Uh, I thought, like, I thought, do you know what? He, he trains at crazy times. 
but just a total me, different I, world. Yeah, it's just it's just a to- I think it's just a totally different animal, really. I, I've read reports and stories about people who used to spar and train with them that you just used to ring them at like daft o'clock in the morning saying, right, we're going for a 10k run. It's like that's power, isn't it? Yeah. Being in control of every little thing. Yeah, yeah. But then how was your training just... out there? Like, how did that work? Because am I normally right in thinking like a boxer has a trainer and then you sort of find a promoter, but obviously going out there, did you have a trainer in place or was it just whoever they sort of provided for you? Yeah, so my manager had got me a trainer in Paris and it was a guy called Fareed Samad and he is actually the head coach for Danny Jacobs. He wasn't at the time, but he is now. Mm, yeah. He was just an amazing coach, really underrated for me. And being there, he really, t- on my own, he really took me under his wing, really looked after me. Um, and even now I'm still in, I'm still in contact with him quite frequently. I, I'd, I've even, I'd love to go out there and train with him again. How um, hard was was leaving that part of it? Then obviously that bond between fighter and trainer is quite special. Yeah, hundred um, percent. It, but it was one of them. It was like that part of my boxing world was going right. But do you know, I, I could tra- I could train seven days a week, three hundred and fifty six days a year. But if I'm not getting the fights, what's the point? Yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah. I don't know. Was yeah. it like a mutual? Was it a mutual parting of the ways? Was it like you know I want to be out of here, and they were like, "Go on then." You know what I mean? Like were they were they good? Were they? Were yeah, they, sort of, they, they, they could have they held. They could have held you the rest of your contract. Do you know what I mean? Like they could have. They could have, yeah. But I, and they were good with me. They did. They did let me leave, and um, like I say I couldn't thank them more than enough for everything they've done for me. But I think it's, you know, when you you're on your own in a, another country, and mm. it's not financially beneficial for you it's a bit like well what else can we do we've just got to let her leave that's it hi yeah. so was it a case of coming straight back over here and then joining up with peter fury like how did how did that come about like how did the, the link up with peter sort of first happen uh, so not many people know this but actually before my before i went to america for my debut um uh, there was a. I had a. You know Sam Jones, who's Joe Joyce's coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he was. He was a bit like a go between before with me and Mayweather. So before I'd went to America, um, I was messaging him. I was like, "Look, Sam, I'm making my pro deb- debut, and I've never ever trained with a pro coach. I don't know. Do you know the first thing about planting? No, not being bouncy on my feet or the yeah. typical amateur style." So uh, Sam had said, oh, well, look at Joe's, Joe's sparring Huey Fury. And his dad's Peter, Peter said, you're more than welcome to come along and he'll, he'll show you, you know, a little thing, a couple of things and show you the ropes and all that. So I actually went and done a couple of weeks with Peter before I went to America. And I gelled really well with Peter, really well. And, you know, when I was in America every now and again, he'd text me asking, asking how it was going. And I become really fond of Peter and when I come back home to the UK obviously I didn't know anyone in the in the pro boxing world in the UK mm. you know things didn't go well in America and the only person who I really trusted was Peter so I went straight to Peter I was like oh Peter can I can I come and train with you um and he was like yeah no problem let's do it so really that, when you think that. about it Peter's trained me for all my pro pro fights and he speaks very highly of you as well, doesn't he? He's like, I seen a little video clip with him on, I can't remember whose Twitter it was the other day, just saying, like, you're looking so good and he couldn't be happier and stuff. And I've heard him say on a podcast before that you, you beat a lot of the lads up in spawn and that. And you know what I mean? He's, he says he's, he's absolutely delighted. So I'm, I'm sure, you know, you must love working with him and that. And, you know, especially what he's done with, with Tyson as well in the past and, and Huey as well. Do you know, he's, he's quite a, doesn't mince his words, does he? Do you know what I mean? He's he's quite a straight up bloke, and that, and he does seem like one of the one of the good guys in in the game. Yeah, he, he is. He's a he's 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 very knowledgeable. Like I think mm. I I think of him as like Mr Miyagi. You know, so I remember I remember the first time when I when I went there when I went to train with him. He's like, I right, go south Pa. and I was like, what? I was like, no, <laughs> Peter, I can't go south Pa. No, he was like, no, go south far. So he showed me little bits, and I was thinking, nah, this isn't for me. And now I can, I can switch without even thinking, thinking about, about it. This. Yeah, and he That's... was like, you need, you need to be able to be able to punch in any position you find yourself in. That's mad, and, though. Like you say, yeah. like obviously, just stuff like that. Like you're always learning. Like 
even though you were a top quality amateur and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? GB set up and that, but you still never stop, like, you still never stop learning and you're always, like, you know, trying to better yourself and learn new things and that. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about Peter because he, he focuses a lot on the technical side. He's not, I remember, um, I'm the type of person where I'm very competitive and I used to have to win every spa. Do you know, even mm. if I'd lose a round in sparring, I'd go back home or, or do you know, do go your head in. Uh, to the room and sit and I'd just think about the spa and beat myself up about it. And I remember Peter saying to me, right, look, I don't care if you lose the spa. And I remember thinking, what? And he was like, I don't care if you get your head punched in. <laughs> and I like, look, do you mostly like, spar? Sorry, go on. Sorry, Savannah. Uh, and I you... looked and he was like, I just want to see you get that jab off. Just try mm. and get that jab off or get that one two going. Or... Literally using and... the spa just to focus on like, one element of what you're trying to do. Yeah, and that's how you learn. It's mad though, like you say, like like you said before there, that um, you know, you came from the amateurs and you were like, I didn't have a clue about I've never done any pro boxing like sessions or nothing like that. Is like is the difference is it sort of like learning a new sport that that or like not a new sport but like a whole different side of the sport like turning over from amateur to pro do you still think that's still like is that still the same now do you think is there still is the difference still there or is it or is it like easier now uh, i believe that pro training suits me better than i was gonna ask that uh, um i don't know i think i don't know whether it's the way i box but Mm. You know, I was never the most fastest, or you know, I was never the most where you see amateurs who throw two hundred shots in one round. That was never me, <laughs> and yeah. I, I, I prefer to pick me shots, take me time, and that works better for me over the longer. Well, not over the longer rounds, but over the more rounds. With you know, championships is ten rather than four. Yeah, and breaking down your opponents over the distance. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. as well. Earlier. Do you mostly do you mostly spar like lads, Savannah, like male fighters? Is it hard to find top quality female sparring like in this or in like you know at your weights like in Manchester and stuff? Are you mostly sparring like the the fellas in Peter's gym? Like how does that work for you sparring? So I've always since I've since I started when I was twelve, I was I was always the only girl in the club. I was no, yeah. it was very rare. So I've always sparred men, always. Even when I was on Team GB, I was the only. Uh, middleweight on the squad when I so I I always sparred the lads Callum Smith, uh, Felix Cashew boxer last night Fowler, so I always sparred the lads, um, and I believe you know you're never gonna get a woman who's as strong as a man, or you're never gonna very rarely you'll come across a female that is technically better than an elite man. Yeah. So it doesn't get much better than that sparring. Um, I do know like I spar April. April, uh, April, do you know what then. I mean? Yeah. And because like I said, it's, it's all about learning. And if I can help April or April can help me, do you know, I'd, 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 I'd jump at that chance of a spa. But looking, do you know, fight fight camp or whatever, or training for a fight, I do prefer to spa men because of the element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can learn more and sort of progress yourself in that way. How's yeah. April doing? How, how, do you, how do you, what hopes have you got for her future? How do you think she'll progress? Oh, do you know what? She's she's come she's come on so much. I, I remember sparring her a couple of years ago, and she's she's come on so much, and she's yeah. she got bigger and stronger. Like I think when I first she was a super welterweight, I think no a welterweight. Now I think she's walking around, you know, maybe at a, a middleweight. So she's she's definitely grown. She's getting older, um. But I've you know, I've got high hopes for April, and she's a lovely girl as well. Uh, she's sound and she's she's put yeah, sound. She's, she's spot on. She's living the life now as well, isn't she? I've noticed that as well. Like her and, and Joe Law's the like thickest thieves. Then <laughs> they are. Uh, yeah. Where they, they've just been somewhere abroad training together and that, and they they're like they seem to be sort of living in the gym all the way through this like lockdown and yeah, stuff, which is yeah. like it's probably the way to do it, isn't it? No distractions. I went to go and do a bit of a. I went to Benwell Cronk. Oh, <laughs> jo Joe's back garden gym. Yeah, I went to go and do a, you know, a couple of sessions with them, but they they do them. Oh, the that's what I, when I said about Joe training salt for six months for this fight. He, um, he's he's some animal in, honestly. Nice. He just he doesn't stop. He doesn't, does he? I, he is no, really, he in any way. <laughs> he doesn't stop talking either. But I uh, you know. <laughs> 
So I just to just to sort of like wrap things up basically. So we're like, as you say, what nine weeks away now, and that's all your focus is on on that date, and you know you will hopefully be boxing for a world title in Newcastle, whether there's a crowd there or not. That's what you're focusing on at the minute. Oh well, yeah, it's been it's been the it's been the longest build up for a world title fight. I don't know. Is this the longest you've gone without having a fight like this, sort of, or not? Or have you gone longer periods? Because when was uh, the last? When was your last pro fight? It was on the Newcastle card. Last Newcastle yeah. card, wasn't it? Yeah, oh, Jesus, was it? I. Yeah. That... But when I getting back my debut, it took about a year for everything to clear up with me getting out the Mayweather contract. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it it took it took a while. So, but I'm not the type of person who has three or four months off and then takes me three or four months to get back into it. I'm always like got my foot in the door, I'm always ticking over. Do you know, I was always sparring type thing. So it's it's not like although I'm having a year out of the ring, it's not like I'm inactive, if you know what I mean. Do you ever think long term, like in boxing, or is it as can you not? Is it always one fight at a time? Like do you ever think where would I like to be in three years or five years? Or do you literally just focus on like October? Well, to be honest, April, all went well. I'd have been a world champion. A couple of yeah. months later, yeah, later, I wanted to come back down to Super Middle, fight for a Super Middle world, world title. Then another one. Another so you, one could have been a two, you could have been yeah. a two-weight world champion. Yeah, that's mad that how it pans another out. One, an, another one October time. And then it, it was penciled in for me to have a, a big showdown with Clarissa Christmas time. And then, you know, all went well. Maybe you got a rematch out of that. And then I believe I've got this far into this without mentioning her. That's mad. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, well, I got to do it. it was well, we'll not, we'll not wrap it up yet. Then, how are you? Then, what's, what's the latest there? Then, what's going on? Um, you're the only person that's ever beat her, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. But like I said, it was I was gearing up for a big showdown with her Christmas time, and then all went well, got a rematch out of it, and then just walked off into the sunset. <laughs> Why there, but Aye. obviously with this COVID, it's just totally from the spanner in the works. I see you still go at it though. Social media, the two years have a bit backwards and forwards. Yeah. The two. <laughs> uh, she, you know what? She, 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 she is a phenomenal, uh, a brilliant fighter, isn't she? She's, she's yeah. broke down barriers. She's got records, whatever. But I do, um, I do generally believe that I've got the skill set and that to beat her. And you know, I've never back down from that do you think it eats away at her a bit maybe that you've beat her before and sort of it sort of plays on her mind and that maybe and there's a bit unfinished business from her side perhaps uh yeah there's got to be as in the that one right. that one mark on your on your record but she it's it's one of them she wants this fight as much as me do you know this yeah, good, that's it. she she wants to you know put all these doubters to bed and you know, obviously it, this is my this is my big big money fight, so to speak. This is my big fight in the headlights, fighting the goat or whatever she calls herself. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it will happen at some point. By it, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. It will happen at some point. It's just, I guess, you know, just have to be a bit more patient and wait for things to play out in that. But like you say, is, was that your plan? Just sort of get in, win the belts, make some money and like get out of the sport, basically? Is that is that how you'd like to see it play out anyway? Yeah, definitely because I, I've I've boxed since I was eleven. I'm twenty nine so, now. I've been yeah. full, I've been lucky enough to be full time since I was seventeen. So really, there's I'm at the point where I don't want to be mid thirties, late thirties, still doing this, still getting my head punched in. Do you know, there's other things I want to do in life. And Aldi and Tesco, and that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah no, I know what you're saying. Though. You, 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 you mentioned you mentioned that before. Interview if you're a world champ. Hi, yeah, yeah. Uh, like yeah. you say with Tasha being 36 and like life changes and responsibilities changing that you know what I mean to like yeah, that's put thing. yourself through them camps the older you get and that must be like uh, must be hard yeah it is it's definitely and it's uh, you know although I'm fit and healthy I've put my body through you know some I've had like two I've had two hand operations a shoulder and elbow every time I you know get out of bed on the morning it's click 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 that type of thing <laughs> same for the boxing as an excuse <laughs> yeah uh so it's 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 just one of them like like you said responsibilities change and outlooks change and there's other things i want to 
you know, tick yeah. off on my on my bucket list. Absolutely. Um, are we all right there, Andrew? Good there. Anything you want to add? No, I think that's all good. We'll wrap that up there for all that. Be. Thank you for joining us, Savannah. And, and and thank you very much for your time. Thanks for giving that, us a bit of time on a Saturday that. afternoon. Yeah. Right, thank you very much. I'll give you a shout when it's online. But I wish you all the best uh, ahead of October. But I'm sure we'll speak to you before then as well. Yeah, let's just let's just hope it happens. Fingers eh? crossed, I. Eh? Uh, fingers yeah. crossed for everyone's sake. Eh? Yeah. Oh, all well. right, thank you. Cheers, Thanks love. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.